So let's go back to the building class for just a second. Can we all agree that if I create five different buildings, I'll have five separate copies of this owner variable and windows, but all the buildings will share the single tax factor variable. Can we all agree on that? Now, I have a strange question to ask you. I've never asked this question in class before. Think about those five building objects that I'm going to create, okay? Building A, B, C, D, and E. We agree they each have their own copy of owner, and they each have their own copy of windows, and they have a shared copy of tax factor. Here's my question for you. Do they each have their own copy of these methods, or do they share the methods? I want you to discuss this for a minute with your partner. We agree that they have their own copies of these variables, and that this variable is shared because it's static. My question now is these methods that are here, are they shared among all the five instances of, of the building class, or does each building class have its own separate copy of these methods? Strangely enough, they have their own copy. At least that's the way you should think about it conceptually. Now, in your mind, you might have been thinking, well, there's only one piece of the code sitting out there in the memory, and all the building objects share it. But in reality, what happens is that the compiler and the Java runtime engine builds these lookup tables which I won't get into, it's very complicated. But what essentially happens, it makes it look to each building object as if they have their own separate copy of these methods. Let me explain to you why that makes sense. Consider two buildings, building A and building B. Let's say you own the first building, building A, and let's say I own the second building, building B. Can you see that when you do get owner on your object, it's gonna return your name? Whereas if I do get owner on my object, it's going to return my name. That makes sense, right? So conceptually, it is much better for you to think about it as if each time I create a building, not only do I create my own set of variables, but try to think of it conceptually that you also create your own set of methods. Now, what's the advantage of thinking of it that way? The advantage of thinking of it that way is it'll make it much easier for you to understand what static methods are, because that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, I wanted to print uh, the name of the owner uh, of this particular building. Now, if I come over here and I just go like this, is this going to work? Mr. Owen, is it going to work, sir? No. Tell me why. Uh, no, the the get owner method is not private, sir. The get owner method is a public method. You can see it right here. What is the issue here? I haven't told it which building I'm referring to. So let's do that. Let's create a building. Mr. Owen, will it work now, sir? Will it know who's who, who, which owner, which building I'm talking about? That's right. I still haven't told it which which building I'm referring to here. So now I need to do this in order to tell it which building I'm referencing. So now if I run this, you can see that it knows which building I'm referring to. Now, let me give you a slightly different example here. I want you to just focus for a minute on this call right here. And I want you to look at this and try and understand, did I do this? Look, did I do this? Did I go math m equals new math? And then did I go s? Did I have to do this in order to invoke the math, 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 max method? Did I have to do that? Does this make any sense to you? Should I need to create a math object in order to use this max method? You agree this would be a pain, right? If I had to create a math object, is the math object adding any value here? It's not. So this is not the way that I invoke the max method on the math class. Instead, I do it like this. And my question is, who owns the max method? There's a very specific owner of the max method. Take a look, sir. Looking at this, you can see who owns the max method. The math class owns it. So whereas over here, we were talking about these methods being owned by individual building instances, in this case, the entire class owns the method. And the advantage of that, or one of the advantages of it, is that I no longer have to create an instance of math to use the method. I can just ask the math class to let me use the method here. So you notice there's no math m equals new math. 
I can just call the method by referencing the class owner. Who wants to guess what kind of method this is? So this is a static method. It, it basically own, is owned by the class instead of being owned by an individual math object. So we see that one of the advantages of having a static method is that you don't need to create an object in order to use the method. Most static methods are what they call utility methods, utility methods. So now let's come over here and ask ourselves, could we make this a static method? And then in the test class, we could just go uh, we could go uh, building dot get owner. Miss Mullen, do you think it's possible for me to declare this get owner method is static? This each building has its own owner, and so if I ask the class to tell me who the owner is, the class is going to be confused. It's like, well, there are several instances of me, and which owner are you talking about? So now, if I try to compile this, you can see that I get an error, and if I look at the error. It says that the non-static variable owner cannot be referenced from a static context. And what that means is that here, the owner is specific to an individual building. It doesn't belong to the class. And so therefore, this method cannot be static. Now, I'm going to write a method, and I want you to figure out with your partner, is it possible for this method to be static or not? Let's say that I wanted to write this method called, and let's say I wanted to convert it into kilograms. So I'm going to say return weight times. And what I want to know is, can, can this method be declared static or not? And if so, why? If not, why not? This is the main point of today's lesson. Sir, the building would have its own weight, but do you notice that the weight of the building is being passed as a parameter here? And then the method is processing that parameter and is returning a value. Let me ask the question a little bit differently, Mr. Baker. Is this method trying to access any of the attributes of the building class? It is not. Therefore, it would be okay not required, but perfectly OK to make that a static method. Let me show you here. It's particular about where the keyword has to go. So this is perfectly OK to do. So here is the main takeaway from today's lesson. Static methods cannot contain attributes of the class. Static methods cannot contain attributes of the class. Now, question, can non-static methods contain static variables? For example, could I put in here, is that okay? Look, I have a non-static method and it contains a static variable. Yes, that is okay because not only is this tax factor owned by the class, but each individual building has access to it also. However, inside a static method, what are the only types of variables I can put in a static method? That's correct. I can only access static variables, or if I want to, I can also create temporary variables in here. But I cannot access, for example, I can't access owner or windows. The reason I can't access those is that when I call this method using a class prefix, it doesn't know which instance of the building I'm referring to. So if I was to put in here, for example, windows, you can see once again, it's going to complain that I'm trying to access a non-static variable from inside a static method.